The luck club, hiking and Barney. You make it your own with your luck and timing. On the luck club. a lot to say about luck and lucky breaks and lucky things that happen. But yeah, it's, the, it's getting a hike with fucking interesting people. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, how much easier could I have made it on myself? Right, yeah. Okay, uh, when we get to this next hike, I'll, I'll, I'm going to do a, a sink mark. Wait, I'll just do it. Mark. All right. We're good to go. Sick. Yes. So, as we were saying, this fucking... Um, the shelter in place, the quarantine, the plague has actually been beneficial for us. At least for me. No, like, same. Yeah. Uh, like you, I like the. I would mean, remind you the thing you said. I was like, I, I don't even know if I can go to sleep right now. Yes, yeah. feeling guilty to rest your body, which is a natural thing. Yeah. Uh, shit, your body shutting down, and you like beating yourself up about it. Like, geez, I just wish that I had more hours awake so I could keep up with <laughs> whoever the system, whoever. whatever. Yeah. Yes, the, the, my needs, I guess, or what? What? No, my my ambitions you yeah, know ambitions, but also i feel like it's the hypnotism of mm. capitalism oh okay i didn't i'm gonna try not to say it but yeah yes. the c word you know <laughs> it's what it is <laughs> but yeah but like that there's you're never enough you're never good enough mm-hmm, you're never mm-hmm, smart mm-hmm. enough and there's some asshole out there who's gonna fucking take your shit yes and you fucking blink yes yeah it's usually a cop but still <laughs> it is usually a cop <laughs> Oh, uh, that I, I the, like I was realizing somebody said it, it with uh, all the, the George Floyd stuff. It's like, oh, racism doesn't even take a day off. Damn, like, fuck, it's fucking, it's always on. It's always on. All of this is built. These things it's are just feeding in. each other. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you you wouldn't have the crazy capitalism if it wasn't being enforced by fucking monsters. Yes. <laughs> Fucking A. Boogeymen are real. They wear fucking uniforms. Damn. Nice suits and shit. Yeah. No, seriously. If you wear a tie, I, I, you know, first off, I want to grab it and choke you by it. But also, it's like, that is the symbol of the fucking oppressor. Damn. Yeah. That's it. It's, I mean, sometimes I'll wear a tie to fucking fool people. <laughs> just to be like, ah, I'm at your fancy party. Yeah, you I'm know? underneath. I'm in between. I'm, 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 uh, that's why that, when they do like, uh, what is it? The... Uh, Paris is burning. Oh and yeah! What they're talking about, really, about like, like passing oh, in society. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about some grand shit here. Yes. We're all trying to pass. We're all trying to like get make it so that we can like seep in and make a life for ourselves or just survive in yeah. a way. Not get our teeth kicked in. Yes. But make our teeth white enough so come on. The man thinks that we're that we're normal. The, the system. Yes. yes. Oh, that is good. That is so good. <laughs> when I saw it, I'm like, good. yo, they're talking about everything, dude, yeah. from whatever angle you're coming from, really. Well, I t- I, you know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, whatever, Tran and, and, and cross-dressers, mm-hmm. all, they're some, some wild creatures out there. True. In the sense of, like, they... Whatever this impulse is that makes them have to be that way, mm, you know, like yeah. I, I don't have it in me. I mean, there's, it is fun to dress up. That's why I'm in Hollywood, right? But not to the level. Oh man, this guy oh, is standing oh, in between. Oh, I, I, I thought maybe he was saying, oh, no, maybe he's he trying, is. He's trying to he's cross, trying to cross, he, cross but... illegally. He's just getting himself a head start. There we go. Okay, okay. I was like, <laughs> he didn't quite have the super crazy guy look. Yeah, he's like right on the edge. Right. Yeah. And it, really, he's probably totally fine. He's just not dressed. <laughs> not, not not tr- yeah. <laughs> As we're talking, whoa! <laughs> the example comes out right there. Like this guy, he's got his he's got his Manila folder, his little his fancy dog. He's got he's comfy got shoes. Yeah. yeah, man, he's probably a millionaire. Actually, yep, that's the vibe I'm getting. You can't wear a pink shirt like that. Not nah, and mean it. <laughs> 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 Not mean it like that. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Yeah, but they, but they, like I feel like you know I'm, I'm fascinated with historical cross dressers. Yeah. Right. Okay. People like ladies that pretended to be dudes to be pirates. Oh like, man, fucking that's fucking like gnarly. Yes. You meant yeah. Yeah. Or or you know that or 
you know, whatever. These these people in history that were like trying to cross cross the line. Whatever the line yeah. was, slip underneath it. Yeah. And and get to where they needed to be. Yeah. Because because you know I think that you know you could go back to like ancient Greece and the like. The Oracle of Delphi was a hermaphrodite, mm. somebody who could see both you mm. know both worlds. And I, I'm just fascinated with that. Like, I don't have the impulse for it. I've been and also I've been so conditioned to be like, I am a straight man, right, right, you know, that right. It's like none of that other. The queerness in me is more about like being open to these ideas yes. and the understanding, and not trying to force people into a certain lane, like a bus lane. Well, I think <laughs> like I, there's a show <laughs> I've been watching a lot. It's, uh, it's called Soft White Underbelly. Have you heard of this? Oh no, what is this? Okay, so this guy. Um, goes down. He's. Lit, I think he. I don't know if he lives, but he has a studio downtown, and it's pretty much a. Uh, he has a studio downtown in Skid Row, and he interviews crackheads, prostitutes, and pimps, bro. What, is this on YouTube? Soft white underbelly. That? Yes, it's on, on YouTube. Okay. I'm Nevertheless, sorry. so not too much to shout out that, but he <laughs> interviewed this one person that was an inter that was intersex, which is the which is the uh, term that they have now for hermaphrodite. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, this person is interviewing. He's like trying to figure out. Like he keeps dropping, saying all these things. Like so, that's what they would make you do when you're a boy, right? Because he's like trying to figure out what you know what they are. And eventually, they say, "Hey, I'm a hermaphrodite. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an intersex, and this, and actually, I'm pregnant right now." Wow. And gnarly, gnarly, gnarly. Okay. Woo. So, um, so what's crazy is that like sh- they are being coy and teasing in a way i don't know how to explain it but they're being like i don't know maybe like in a in a like cute way but um what's interesting to me is that like so from us from our point of view as men if you are heterosexual you have certain ways that you you may uh present present yourself in a, in a masculine way to society and especially even to women yeah. right yeah. to maybe get things that you want and then women Punch it up. yes <laughs> and then women have the opposite right yeah. but this person is like dancing on both sides you know like wow. and and probably sees the world like seeing what they like about them on both sides and that's how they get will themselves through life you know wow. think about like, without having to choose a side without really. having to choose a side whatever that person may be into they just like start am- hamming that up and I'm just like, whoa. I, mean, I will say there is something liberating in the idea of not having to, like, like I, my, I talk a little bit about this in past episodes about how my mom forced heteronormativity on me. Oh, we it's don't always want, moms. Yeah. Well, because, you know, she, I was worried. I didn't want, you know, they have to struggle so hard the game. No, I don't think it's that. They just say that. I well, don't no, know. They want dude. grandkids. And you can't, That's you can't, what it is. Fuck don't don't fuck my, my legacy up. <laughs> Being a fruit, <laughs> don't mess up my shit. How many times a mom's like, no, no, man up. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, seriously, they're the ones that are don't most cry. Afraid, yes. most afraid of us being, you know, feminine. Well, and we they just do it instinctively, yeah. and so we don't. Even, then, then it's not just our dads that make it hard for us to show emotion. Let's like, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> it's coming from both sides. It's coming from both sides. It's coming it's from, coming side. from inside the house. Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, like, I, I see. Yes. It's definitely that. I mean, I'm not Caribbean or anything like that, but I have friends that are Caribbean. They talk about like, no, it's ha- in the in the Caribbean household. It's the mom that's just like, don't you dare wear an earring, don't you dare, yeah. you know? Oh yeah, my mom took away baking, man, and, I, and I'd say it's because she didn't want me to be a right. She I, like she never said those words, but I knew it was like she was always <laughs> trying to control my diet, mm. and she didn't want me to be feminized with the with the, the baking. And I loved it, and I would have been. You know what I mean? An I awesome. Was, I I loved cooking, and it just like it's there were so many ways, so many things like interested in art and drawing right. and design and maybe even fashion that. You know, she's like, nope, baseball. You got to be a doctor. Yeah, you know, that's all she wanted was mm-hmm. like either like a doctor, you know, or maybe a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, I'm an artist, mother. Right. I'm in the theater where anybody can be whatever they want. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's a tough it's a tough uh, culturally like wanting to be a, a just sensitive. Yeah, like I, I think it goes across. Well, the strength in wanting to show your insides. Yeah, from a, you actually have a warrior right here that wants to share. Yes. You have a warrior that say, "Hey, I want to make people feel something," oh. but you want to put on the armor that you have on them. I, I gotta say, Mark, <laughs> I knew that this would be a great conversation because you know you 
the way the way you do your your comedy is you're playing in those in those vulnerability places yes, that yes. I fucking love. Thank you, and man. I'm gonna say this: you don't see very many black comedians doing that. That is a strong point that I have. Yes. That I, yeah. Yeah, and it's and it, <clears throat> I admire it. Oh god, I'm getting all gay here. No, <laughs> no, dude. No, <laughs> dude it's, it's, yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's not, and I feel, I, man, I see the strength because, uh, you get, you see everybody move a little closer to you when yeah. you say something that is so true Ooh, and that, vulnerable. right, oh. they kind of lean in, yeah. they lean in, it's like, gotcha, you look, you oh. hook them in some, yes. right, because they're like, oh, fuck, I would have never said that, but I feel that, and thank you, right, yeah. and, uh, and uh, it's something I noticed early it's also, it's also can be manipulative because you can give sure, a little bit of something sure. right you can give a false amount of uh vulnerability right and then and uh and some people lean in but really you're just like yeah now, now you show me a piece of yours i don't do that i don't do that often but i, I see how no, you, well, the powers I, can be used I you know would say when i was growing up being a manipulator right that is i mean now my superpower at times is being able to find people's deep dark secrets You're right because i'm willing to talk about my deep dark lay secrets. something on the table yeah, yeah. It, it, yes it used to be manipulation i would use it to to find people's secrets and then use them against them but now <laughs> I don't, i'm not interested in right anymore. right exactly yeah. but it's true it's it's it, that's also i think how uh like creepy cult leaders <laughs> get oh, to do their shit. Of course, shirt. man. It's like, look, I'm a broken man just like you. Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you my terrible upbringing, and you have some too, don't you? And then they rope everybody in, and now they have this therapy uh, that they've built to, to get rid of the, okay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and now yeah. you. Now you you're, you're been in a cult for four years. Yes. Damn. <laughs> yeah, now you haven't talked to your family in forever. So it's a. Uh, it's intense, and they all use the same thing. Man, I've been listening and learning a lot about cults lately, man. I mean, it's again, it's it's big again in our culture. Yes, and well, secret societies and cults. We all, I, I, um, I took this class, and they said like we have a natural. You know what? I'm just gonna try. We have a natural want to be brewing e permit only. I'm gonna give it a try okay, though, cool. because it's open and it doesn't look like there's anybody here, so I don't right. think that parking enforcement awesome. is actually yes. doing shit. Wonderful. You know? Yes. Well, I uh I learn I'm learning about these these uh cults and then also like um we have a natural want to be cult to be in a cult. We yeah. have, naturally we want to get together and worship something or pray with somebody or like b- bow down to a higher a higher being. Yeah, well I think people want leadership. Right. Yeah. Mm. And and I think that what ends up happening is the church says, "Well, I don't have the authority, but I am in touch with God and he's the ultimate authority." Yeah, no, it's, uh, this, is, this, is, this is right up my alley because I, I think about this stuff a lot. And uh, oh, we can go this way. I think the okay. time is this way. Yeah. Um, is your light low on or something? It should go off. Okay, cool. Uh, but also, I don't think it'll kill the battery in the short, in an hour. Okay, cool. I feel like the last time I was in this parking structure was with a, a DP uh, teacher, a cinematography teacher I had, mm-hmm. and then I found out recently that he has been accused of uh, having kitty porn on oh, his computer. Oh, no. Like, a, oh, we love Tom so much. And Jesus. Then fucking, he's a sweet guy, but nope, turns out he was a Creep. real monster. Piece of shit. Yeah. Jesus. That's like the problem. With yeah. The, that's the problem with the world. Too it many is, fucking creeps. It's just Jesus, man. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, I think it's you know, you're right. I think people want leadership, and it's easy to say, God gave me authority. You know, I think it's part of the, it's divine. Like, I think it's part of being a mammal, right? Like part of the herd still has to have one person who's like, I think we should go this way. This direction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And just you can relax and be like, oh, thank okay, you. Just, just, just going with everybody and we're doing somewhere. I don't even <laughs> yeah, care. Yeah, exactly. That's, it feels good a, oh, a little bit. We're going to hunt this thing down? Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you know. So I think it's, uh, and, and you know, over the years, every empire has figured out how to whatever, keep people's mind on that same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, 
the uh, James Bridges Theater. Okay. I want to say I met all kinds of crazy, amazing filmmakers here. That's cool. I mean, cool. It's, it's nice being in this neighborhood because then this I'm like, This is gorgeous. Oh, I've never just walked around. Oh yeah, we'll go to the uh, this campus before. It's it's a great campus. They I, really uh, built this out of a forest. You can just tell. Yeah. They just cut it. They're just like, hey, this is let's put this. This is here. here. This is badass. And yeah, this is the new art building. I haven't I haven't seen it. Fucking Broad, baby. I shot like Eli. Wow. Uh, yeah. So Sick. I shot uh, my short my my experimental film is called New Descending a Staircase, and the staircase was actually at the old building here. Mm. And so I got a, a, a lady to get naked on campus. That was like that was really my goal. Was like, can I get somebody naked outside on campus? You pulled it off. And I did, and it was a, a weird experimental movie. That's what I like making. So you've been doing any stand-up lately? Or so I have been doing a shit ton of Zoom mics. Okay. Yeah, and I love it. I mean, the, mostly the Al Bamani's been doing the show up, go up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, I haven't got on that yet. Uh, you know, there's six mics a week on that one. So Whoa. I have been grinding on that. And then I went and did a, an outdoor mic the other day, and it was fucking great. Just like... Being like typically, I do my my show from my bed, mm-hmm, you know, my, yeah. my, because it's just easy. And uh, yeah, and it was wonderful being in front of people. Yeah, I love it. it. I love do it, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, but yeah, um, doing stand up right now is great, is and it? people well, want they it. Need it. They need it. I yes. wasn't even gonna go that far, but yes, they need it. They need it. And when you go in front of a crowd, they are appreciative. It's this, like L. A feels like LA feels like you're in a podunk town where people are appreciative. I don't yes. know if you Yeah, they're just like, oh, oh you guys came to our town and did this? Like it feels like that here when it never felt like that. You know? Well I have you know, I think the people that are willing to take the risk to go out and see some live comedy are probably in a lot of pain. Right. You know? Mm. And I think that who is it I wanna say Doug Stanhope was talking about you can't really do comedy in Hawaii because everybody's already happy there. Oh, what a smart, wow. <laughs> yeah. He said, that's why you got to do it in places like New York and Chicago. Because they're, they're miserable. Where they're actually hurting <laughs> and just got off a job that they really, really despise. Yeah. Wow. Well, so, uh, you've been going, doing some outdoor mics? Yeah, I've been doing some here and there. Um, you know, they got one in Pan Pacific and oh, things yeah. like that. And, um you know, I mean, I've done one or two indoor too. I'm not going to act like that now. Nah. There's some. No, I'm, you know. I just got half of the vaccine. Right. So. Well, yeah, there's there's one or two going on that are awesome. And uh, the crowds are really appreciative. And it's just good to work on stuff. Yeah. And, man, like. I mean, I think those of us that are actually giving a shit about crafting ourselves during this thing are going to come out of it. Like I was thinking of, uh, you know, the pupa, the, the little, the little worm that is inside of the cocoon. Yes. Yes. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that don't come back. I think, so. be, I think so. I think, and also the people that like had to go home. Yes. Yeah. They're not coming back. No. They got jobs out there now or something. Well, it's, it's just building back from having to leave your parents' ba- basement is a fucking. Big but also leap. the world is. I feel like the world is not going back to normal. So oh, maybe, yes, maybe you don't need to be in stand in only LA and what's the name just to, to climb. Maybe not. Maybe yeah. you could actually build something from another town that you're in if you're in Michigan maybe, or in something like that. Maybe. Uh, do you know Jess Wood? No. Uh, okay, so she went to Albuquerque, and I'm like, oh, maybe she could build a little Albuquerque comedy. Thank you, and we're all connected. I'll come out there now and do yes! your show and things like that. I don't think that that's necessarily bad. I also think that we're going to be in a place. Uh, it's funny, you live right down the street from my church. I go to mm-hmm. Agape over there. Oh, I've heard of Agape, yeah. Yeah, um, and, you know, they, they've they always done the co, the, both the video and the, the live, mm-hmm. but now they've got, like, I don't know, Six or seven thousand people show up every Sunday to watch the digital show. Now. Wow, and that's much bigger than their audience that they ever had. Mm. Um, See, look at the payoff so, of that. So I think I think many shows are going to be both. Right, are going to be have a digital element 
Everything's going to walk from all, all over the world. We're but in that place now. Yeah. <laughs> Streaming now. You stream while you do it. And yes. like, there's no reason not to be. And now you're going to see how your audience can be way larger. People yes. were like, I don't know how we can do that. No, you figured it out now yeah. in this time. I, we were forced to. Yes. Yeah. So those are positives out of this. Yeah. Uh, and I don't see that. I, I see it not going out. I'm trying to push a thing. I'm on the Fresh Jays, uh, a Fresh Jays podcast. And like mm-hmm. we turn ourselves to video and now you know first off views have gone up right just yes. because of that yep. and then i'm like trying to teeter to them doing it live because if you do it live yes. now there's more reasons for people to but who know maybe you know, tip you know, us maybe you, whatever yeah, seriously uh fucking get on jimmy Dore's mailing list okay because he does uh basically a live he does two or three live youtube shows a week mm-hmm and, of course, he does his podcast, and he does, you can see it on his YouTube later on. Mm-hmm. So he's got kind of a bit of a media empire. Yeah, that's amazing. But I watch the fucking tips going on the fucking YouTube, and it's like he's making probably $3,000 just in that live, just getting tipped out, just live. Because they're there, they want to, and the way they handle it is like, uh, read, you know, if you spend $25, he'll read your question. Man. Right? Boom. Yes. So, and they want that. They want to feel connected. It's like yes. people want to poke and say something, like, see me. I, you know? uh, I watched the Hot Tub <laughs> show last night. Was uh-huh. the Hot Tub show? Um, and I tipped, whatever, $6.66 because I like that. It's a fun It's amazing. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, they said my name on the show. So I was like, oh, it's like I got to be part of the show. You did. Yeah. People want, man, all the way at home. We're yeah. not... People, yes. Yeah, but no, but I got that feeling. I got that right. feeling of connecting, and I think that's what audiences. If you're not going to be in a live venue, you want to feel like you're part of the show. Shout outs yeah. are powerful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you should definitely. Watch, I mean, I'll say this: just get on Jimmy's mailing list, watch one of his shows, mm-hmm. and then you can see like, look, motherfuckers, <laughs> they're fucking yeah. doing it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think that even uh, Graham Elwood basically stole jimmy's model Mm -hmm. but you know whatever we're if you could find your audience and find them snatch money yes take it exactly i mean yes you know whatever youtube takes 30 percent or 40 percent whatever it is but you wouldn't have any of that yes you wouldn't have that 60 cents (laughs) man originality is originality is not that it's not great and not that it's overrated but i'll say it's not appreciated that's what I'll say. But I also think if you could format yourself in a, something that somebody else is doing, then you could find your originality in yes. that frame. Yes. Let's go this way. Okay. Just because there's a beautiful building, I want to okay. look at it over. Yes, this is a beautiful campus. This I got to come gorgeous, here every day for man. three years. And uh, yeah, if you uh, have you been to grad school yet? No. Well, if you ever decide to go to grad school, you should figure out how to go here. Probably genius. This feels, <laughs> this feels super collegiate, and yes. it's just awesome, you know? Well, and they use it, because of the red bricks, they use it to stand in for all kinds of Eastern schools. Mm. Yeah. they this, this has been faked as almost every, of course, faked colleges, but also it's been faked as Harvard and, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's got some real interesting... What'd you go to school for? Uh, film school. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh... You know, I'm still, I still, I still got a little, little tiny connection. I did uh-huh. post production for years mm-hmm. to, you know, to keep things afloat, but I can't go back to that. Not ever again. It was what was wrong. What was that? Uh, it's just brutal. It's like there's 60, 70 hour weeks, uh. and nobody appreciates your work, uh. and you're always doing something wrong. Uh. But I mean, you know, they just beat on you, even though you make the movie. Yeah. You, you piece it all I, together. I'm the one that I basically <laughs> say I translate between. The producers and the network. Everyone's brains. Yeah. Everyone's brains. Man. But it's, a, it's a job where I could make, let's say, 600 bucks a day. Mm-hmm. At the height of my... Right. This is great money. But for the the torture, I can't, I can't do it. And again, like, nothing's going to compare. I'd rather be broke and be on stage. Mm. And you can't really... You don't have the energy to want to be on stage I, after working those hours. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I can... I, I'm sorry. That same... Oh yes, please. He's 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 always flirting. What's his name? That's Barney. Hi Barney. Oh yeah. No, he's into boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a lot of boyfriends. 
Come on, bud. Yeah, I saw, um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> no, he's got, it's, it's, but this guy, Henry, the guy, it's a dog, another dog named Henry. Barney is just obsessed with, with whenever we go to the park. I think, uh, like, Henry will do this thing where he'll just lay down and Barney will, like, stand over him, like, protecting him. He's mine. That's, uh, that's hilarious. And it's crazy. There's a dog in the neighborhood. My roommates have a dog named Major. And <laughs> every time we walk him, there's this lady that's in her window that sees her dog is screaming. And her dog's name is Henry, too. Oh, and shit. she'll be like, is that Major? And then she comes down and we have to play with him. It's cute. Also, we're like... Major bro, let's go the other way. You know? <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't this, always want to hang out for now. 30 minutes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so uh, I this is Royce Hall. I saw the um, uh, Taiko, uh, you know, the Taiko band. Uh, what's the, it's a famous Japanese band where they play the drums. I saw them there, but I saw somebody else that, for whatever reason, whoever they program in there is just like the most magical. I act i've ever seen really like just like people that are you wouldn't like go to a regular rock concert to see this is gorgeous man i'm about to take, yeah. take a picture yeah or two <laughs> yeah. 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 probably all this stuff was built in the 20s i think yeah i came here for one class over the summer it was like statistics or something like that oh yeah and uh, the last day, it wasn't over the summer, it was like towards the end of the year, but the last day I came, they were like graduating, or there was a graduating class, so I got to see everybody walking around. Exciting. Yeah. Then they like jumped in a, in a fountain over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like... Uh, Did you do that? No. I didn't really officially graduate with everybody okay, else. Okay, okay. Because I was... A, okay, so I'll tell the story. I was a big old crackhead. Okay. <laughs> right at the... <laughs> Right at the end there, at the, mm-hmm. at the, the end of my uh, time in college. So I basically took like a year off just fucking chasing after fucking drugs. Right, right. And it was fucking great. But then, of course, at a certain point, my life would completely fall apart. Uh, I, was, I couldn't, keep, couldn't keep my shit together. And then I took um, uh, ayahuasca. Okay. To, Uh-oh, we're going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, we're, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll intervene here. <laughs> I took ayahuasca to get sober, and it restructured my brain. Mm. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't feel like I had to be addicted anymore. Oh, jeez. It works. You feel like it like, cut to the reason why you were doing drugs in the first Part, place. Yeah, partially, but also I did a little bit of reprogramming. I did a uh-huh. little bit of, I don't need to drink, I don't right. need to do drugs. Oh, okay. Drink, and, That's a reset. Just, That's yeah. a reset. And, you know, when you're, when the, a powerful psychedelic moves through your body like that, you don't feel like the need for anything else. You're mm-hmm. like, oh, shit, what was I doing? Right. You know? And, uh, look at this. This dog is so happy. He is. <laughs> um, oh, got bad? But, yeah, I, then I, you know, so I took that year off. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I got, only got one quarter left to get out of school. Why don't I just finish that knock up? that out real quick. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was, you know, I was in a better place. Uh, I wasn't a degenerate fucking crackhead anymore. Head way more clear. Yeah. And you probably know, did better for the new outlook. And the crazy thing is the one class I took was like in, uh, I was running the uh, post-production for the whole, like uh, UCLA has a, um, uh, an in-house television show. Mm-hmm. So I was running post for that for whatever, for a quarter. And that was rewarding. That was like, yeah. And I was like, Oh, and then I, then somebody <clears throat> who I knew from that class set me up at my first job. Oh, perfect. Right. So it was like, Oh yeah. So that's, that was like, it was the universe was like, Oh, you know what? If you're off drugs, we could give you a job. Yeah. You know? yeah that's really kind of how thing. it rewards you sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I was uh, didn't know what I had when I was here, because you know it's just like that thing where it's like I was in my late twenties and I kind of was just like, okay, I gotta get go to mm-hmm. I gotta go back to college. Mm-hmm. And I was a total stoner, fucking alcoholic. Then I met a bunch of shady characters here. Actually, there's uh, the three guys over at the film school. Where one of them was a meth dealer, and the other two were his, basically his like gang. And so I bought meth from them. <laughs> mm. And that fucked me up. Let's go this way. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, 
It's good to be sober. I mean, what? I mean, not. I mean, uh, I did take a microdose of LSD today, so you know, yeah. I'm not completely 100, percent but I did have uh, about 19 years or 11 years of complete sobriety. So I feel like I, I, I reset. Yeah, it's yeah. reset. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'd only known you so much, but you always seem pretty grounded to me. Levelly <laughs> grounded, like yo, this dude. Is listening, but listening for uh, from a, f- a few different layers, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I uh, was. It was really ha- happy to see you on the mic the other day. Yeah, that was a great. Katrina yeah. is the best, and that was a really. Have you done her show yet? Uh, no. But yes. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. I'll try to hustle that. Yeah, dude. That show is supportive and just like yeah. nice and it's good energy, and they keep their mics on and their messaging and send you cash. It's just that was yeah. positive, and I just got to just. Talk my shit. Yeah. It's just Seriously. good. It's fun, man. And uh, I enjoy it. Uh, stand-up is cool. I've been doing music lately, too. Yeah, what kind of music? Like, man. He just he loves it. Yeah, watch out, man. Yeah, but I think he loves the smell of the fresh gas. Come here, bud. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> he loves that. He's all covered in... He's all covered in... He's just enjoying living his best life. Yeah. He is a happy, happy dog. We do this, oh, I mean, you know, not, not every day is a podcast, but we definitely go out on big, long hikes slash walks every day. He is, like, so close and not, and, like, watching out for you. It's a good, not every dog can do that. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's very needy. We're very bonded. Mm. Uh, but he's still got his own independence. Right. And, you know, I'm, I'm worried if I ever have to go back to a real job. What the fuck's gonna happen to us? <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'm gonna do everything I can to not fucking do that. Though. We'll probably be from home with the way everything is going. Yeah. I'm sure it helps a lot of these companies to not have to have office space. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I think though that the uh, the creepy part is like they do want to have you in prison for that time. Though. I think that yes, the the actual programming and the like we can have you on a system situation because being able to tell people when they can go to lunch. Oh yeah. And when they can eat and. The time that they can do what they can be doing is, like, I'm sure they're like. But talk about the cult aspect. I feel like that's it, that where your job becomes like your religion at that point. It does. Yeah. And that's what like, there's so much to that. It's just people's rhythms and things like that. Oh yeah. You guys take this little break and do this, and so now your body is in this like, this rhythm, and now you're just like, yeah. I hate, I don't like it. I don't. I what, snack what, whenever I want. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so wait, so you're making music? Yes. Like what? It, like rap, so, hip hop. We've been doing hip hop. We've been doing, uh, I would say, R and B. Yes. You know, um, I can sing a little bit, so that's been fun. Woo-hoo. And just like yeah, dude, using you have a good voice. Thank you, man. Yeah, I like. You, there's a, there's a, like in this. I don't know. It's candor. It's silky. It's silky. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. So experimenting with that in a different way outside of stand up, I feel like has. Uh, Help me just as a person, because I feel like I always had songs to write, but I, I just think if you figured out a way to to blend the two worlds, mm. let's say, dude, if I, yeah, I don't yeah. want to make comedic music, no, but if I find a way to deliver good music and then make jokes afterwards, yeah, we're because I think that the thing is is like people are definitely missing, like, uh, and again, yes, it's a gimmick if you're making comedy music but i mm-hmm. think if you go to a mic and somebody offers some real music uh it's like oh wait a second it's like it changes their mind i think that's why i love variety shows yes because yeah you get a little bit of comedy you get something ridiculous you get an interview and then you get some music yes and i'm like this is i think the problem with comedy shows is it's like you can only handle so much fucking yes, comedy. Yes, toying in my brain with these intense premises and yeah. just like, let me just vibe and pat my foot. Yes. That's what people want to. Just chill out. Yes. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Yes. Mm-hmm. He, is a, he is a very, we're, we're damn spoiled, the two of us. <laughs> you know. yeah. oh, I haven't seen this sculpture before. It feels very corporate to me, but I do still want to look at it. 
I mean, it's beautiful, but it's also like almost meaningless. Oh, you know what? I gotta do it. Fuck. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> almost hurt myself. I'm right. happy you did not. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> Woo. That's pretty sick. I mean, to me, like that's the whole point of public art: is can you write it? Can you fuck it? Is it? Is it something? Is that it writable? Can you move? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick, dude. Yeah. It's beautiful, okay, so too. It's not, it's not as shitty as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> I take back everything I thought. Yeah, there was a... I grew up near, like, Cal State Long Beach. And so we... Whatever. Yeah, I took violin classes. So there's a bunch of stuff I'd do over there. But they have their own little sculpture garden. And I would always be climbing on it. And the security would be like... Um, Sir. And I'm like, what is this for? Yeah. I cannot touch looks, it. Why is it outside? Yeah, it looks like a fucking jungle gym. Why aren't you letting me fucking play on it? Let's go this way. Why not? Yeah, I never. Get to see a little more of the campus. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I really think I've got a variety show in me mm-hmm. that I want to do. And maybe it'll just be the live version of the Luck Club. You know, do an interview, have a musician, have a comedian, and boom, there's the show. Yes. Yeah. That sounds sick, and it's simple. Yeah. And also, you can host it. All of these things should be shows. Yes. All of them. But, you know, a lot of people are just going to keep it what it is, but yeah. I like to see them building. I yes. like to see them building and growing and being brought more and more to life. Yeah. Wouldn't um, it be interesting? Like, people know you as a comedian, but then I bring you on to do your music. Thank you. Right. And then if it's good, and then if it's, it, it makes you feel, yeah. it's just like, dude, I need to, yes, that dude's bringing heat. I mean, look at all these, oh, let's go to this. This is, this will be under the little, this, now this hallway has been in almost I think every, I've already seen it. I'm yeah. going to take a picture, yeah. Yeah, every fucking, whatever, Gilmore Girls yeah. <laughs> kind of show. Yeah. This is sick. <laughs> Yeah, that's dope. Now we're gonna have an intense conversation about <laughs> you know whatever whatever it is. Our walk and talk through this. This seems like that. Yeah. You have to do your hands like this while you're yeah. walking. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very professorial. Yeah, I, uh, I, I. But also, you look at the actors, you know, that have finally like, you know, they finally got big enough that they can try to put their own music out, and it would make sense. That they would, like Idris Alba, right? Alba. Mm, yes. But he was kind of doing them at the same time. He was always DJing yeah. and doing things. Uh, so many people that do that. If, if I were to play out the ideal, if I were to play out the ideal. Let's talk it. Let's, let's speak it into being. <laughs> okay. Let's cast the spell. I am making noise with music. I'm making noise with music like I have some listeners and fans and people that are liking it. And then also I drop a special yeah. so that it comes it comes at a at a similar time. And also people want both of them and you can differentiate. Yeah. Um, that would be that, the I ideal. Mean, I mean, are you a Gemini? No, <laughs> I'm not. Kidding, but, I'm not. But, I'm a Leo. But, I, but, I, but, but I'm a Gemini. So like seeing being able to do two things is like, right. yeah, fuck yeah. Dude, I've been meeting so many Geminis lately. Uh-huh. Well, I feel like Gemini and Leo get along pretty well. We do, yes. Yeah, I think it's like there's there's no ego. Because mm. I think a lot of signs, with the, you'll, you'll, it's almost like you'll bring out the ego in the other person. Yeah, yeah. that is a, a <laughs> facet. Do you do you are you are you a person that describes to, to the astrology stuff? Or I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit. Oh no. Because it's huge right now. It's like uh, well, I think because the, the the world needs some guidance. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I think that. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of shysters out there, and I think that's the bigger problem that I have, Mm -hmm. is that I think that there are people out there bullshitting themselves. Mm -hmm. Not not just... Lying to yourself, man. Yeah, not just like they they want to build a business or whatever, but they also think they have magical powers. Mm -hmm. Which, again, like, (laughs) part of having magical powers is thinking you have magical powers. Wow. You know what I mean? It's it's tough. Mm. It's a tough one, but it's like... it's I really... Because I I don't want to say gray zone, because it's... It's not true because I met a guy uh, the other day. He's a BAFTA uh, nominated uh, <laughs> filmmaker, uh-huh. uh, and he's a real sorcerer. He is uh, he is operating in such a magical space, the most magical space I've ever met. Like he's just like 
he doesn't have to really be connected to the world because somehow he's gotten money from he doing makes things that he wants to do yeah mm-hmm. and he's and so he gets to be in that space and i'm like i did something i want to learn about that no i've met somebody like that and they actually were gemini and they <laughs> they actually were just like you can do whatever you want I, it's about my energy i bring things that i want to myself yeah and then they they say, I want this. And then you watch it. Someone Happen. offer it to them. Yeah. Yes. And you're just like, yeah. what? Yeah. What? And then they say to me, you're blocking your own self, probably. On some levels, we are. We're our own worst enemies. And it's like, it's hard to see that because if you're like, if you're stepping on your own face, mm. it's like, who is this? Yeah. It's oh, me. Oh, jeez. Damn. Yeah. But I'm, this is one of the reasons I, you know, like I said, I built the, doing this thing, this podcast, The Luck Club. There's magic in, implied in that mm-hmm. is because uh, if you're just sitting at home, no magic is ever going to happen. True. You got to be out in the world. You do. That's where, this is where the fucking magic happens. You have to submit to yourself to, the, to it all. Yeah. And be available. And you know, it's uh, like, like as I was coming down here, I was thinking like, oh, it'd be great to go to fucking UCLA. Now, is that magic that you happen to be in the neighborhood? I don't know. You thought it. But you didn't know yes. where you were going. I didn't say I'm right near UCLA. Yeah, but <laughs> I, but it really, you just call it into being, and there it is. You know. Hmm. I also love this weird circuitous work because we're back at another spot that we were just at, but I love it. But it looks so different from every angle. This, yeah. where I first kind of seen this, I don't know if this was this, but did you ever play Tony Hawk Pro Skater? I all? didn't, but <sighs> I, I get it. So he, this was one of the sets? This was one of the sets, and I'm looking at it, and it was like, this is one of the angles, and you could like, shh, and just like jump off, and like they had, you know, they obviously build it to make it look more skatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see that type of stuff in the distance. Yeah, yeah. Dope. <laughs> and everybody's nice. Yeah. That dude had the most UCLA glasses and ponytail that he could have. <laughs> and gave <it> a <laughs> and, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I also, I think GTA, uh, was it 4, it takes place in L.A.? Yes. San Angeles or whatever? Yep, San Andreas. San Andreas. And uh, and his last one is just like all L.A. Dude, they play, I don't know if you play video games, I don't play them that much. I, I, can't, I can't really, I'll tell you why, but go ahead. Well, dude, they have like, it's all of L.A., it's most of Southern California actually, and you just drive yeah. you, it looks identical to it and then they add expansion packs so there is like ucla or there is like complete filled like um, fill in the world yes yeah. so you like you could be outside and like be in worlds you could jump you could join gangs all these things and the game is just complex and deep and they've been playing it for the last like four, four years. years yeah yeah, yeah. So i played a little bit and one of the things that was great is you, you know, there is a familiarity a mm-hmm. little bit if it's a little there's a little like uncanniness to yes it though. yes yeah. But uh, it definitely fulfilled a little bit of my fantasy when I was going to school here. And I was still a, uh, yeah, let's go this way. I'm following you, man. Um, I was still a drunk. Mm -hmm. I would drunk drive to and from school all the time. Oh, Jesus. I was a bad man. But one of the things is, is you know, in certain parts of L.A., you can fucking go balls out fast mm-hmm. and especially if you're drunk a little bit right <laughs> you know you're like taking taking the risks yeah uh i was like oh wouldn't it be great to have uh them shut down the city one day just so that you could drive as fast as you wanted through all the streets of los angeles and then it happened and that's uh, fucking grand theft auto. <laughs> that's grand theft auto but also that was the beginning of quarantine oh yeah i don't sure. know oh, if you oh my god yes it was amazing <laughs> that was insane oh my taken god. down taken Fuck down it, yes. that was nuts just i uh, yes I, and I, I was going a little crazy too, but then there would be people that just go, you're like, you're standing still, and they just go, wow! Yeah, yeah. Like almost your car lifts off the yes. ground, they're going so fast. There was a moment Ooh. where you could really drive in a city for a second. Yeah. And it, it was, was like, amazing. never had that before, never experienced that. Which made me feel like I was in, like, um, <laughs> what's that Will Smith? Uh, I Am Legend. Yes. Yeah, there, was a, there was a definitely apocalyptic little dystopian vibe going on yes there still is a little bit it, oh it's, I mean, yeah we're still in it it's still we're a little bit of hint of it sure, for sure dude we're in a crazy time right oh, now I it's love, a I love it. I, it's kind of cool yeah. <laughs> i i see people dressing a little bit dear weirder and different and i just feel like I, I keep saying things are not going back to normal bro uh, 
things are like, if I was a business owner and I found out that I could just, if I was a restaurant owner yeah. and I found out that I can just use iPads instead of waiters and people would just come in and order yeah. food, yeah. like, why would I go back to that yeah. instead of a person? Seriously. Like, I, I think there's so many things that if we could figure out, like if the powers that be could be like, bro, you only need to work 20 hours a week to pay your rent. You know what I mean? If they could allow that to happen. Four hour work week, four day work four week. Four day work week. Or, or maybe you have two intense 10 hour shifts. But I mean, on the flip side, who does that hurt? Like if they don't need to hire that many people, then. No, but that, here's my point. Let's okay. say, let's say there's uh, 10 million jobs. Okay. Right? And if only people are working at 40% of those jobs, then you have more people to be able to have the job. The thing is they don't want to pay the money. They don't to want pay to pay two a living, people. Well they, well, they don't want to, want to pay a living, living wage. To two people. For two people. That's but, the bigger problem. Yeah. But, you know, these people have plenty of you're money. Saying, you're saying if there's 10 million jobs and there's still 300 people that need to work, 300 million people that need to work. You could split up the hours between these, these 300 million people. But, and pay them more. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, because I know, mm-hmm. like, if I look at the financial system, there are people out there, fuck, like Bezos and fucking Gates. And yes. These guys have more money than they will ever be able to spend in their whole goddamn it's true. lives. Yes, yes. Two lives. Now, if Jeff Bezos had to actually fucking pay a living wage to all of his employees, he'd still be richer than everybody man, else. Man, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like a... Okay, so this is like, I feel like this is like the, the back alley of the, like, weird art. No, this is sick. Yeah, I love it. His name's Elmo. Yeah, I used to come over here and smug, smug joints. Man, this is peaceful. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? And there's a little... Is loose. that a bear? I don't know what it is. Yeah, maybe, yeah. It's like whatever you just, you make no, it like, up. Yeah, it's, it's got some kind of human vibe, too, or like bipedal creature uh-huh, uh-huh. to it. I tell you, could you imagine you're the guy that fucking Dimitri Hadzi? Nineteen. And he's just like, oh, I'm going to throw these pieces of metal together. Hey, $50,000, bro. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh, Barney. No. Be good. Be good, buddy. Hey, hey. <laughs> okay. I guess we're going to go say hi. <laughs> Oh yeah, let me let me get him let me get him away then. He doesn't he well he doesn't have good good energy with puppies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll oh, go he's around. A guy. <laughs> ah, no, Barney. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you stupid punk. <laughs> Come on, stop it. <laughs> yes, I get it. We're going. <laughs> uh, Barney segment. <laughs> yeah, the Barney segment. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Uh, also, when I was here at film school, I would come here and look at these. What's up, man? How you yeah, doing? Like, keep going this way, bro. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Of course, the puppies are like, what? Right. They're like looking back like, what? I would come out here and I'd imagine, like, this could be some kind of alien creature. It that could. Earth. Yes. <laughs> yeah, easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And this one, we're that is definitely looks like, looks Star Wars-ish. Yeah. That. For surely. Well, and I wonder if Lucas came out here or any of the, I wonder when they put it here, Encounter 7. I mean, I Undated. Know, that, yeah. that is so shapely of that. Come on, man. Yeah. And then we got an obelisk from 2001 over there. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know the TV show Night Gallery? No. Oh, it's from the 70s, I think. But he would go and he'd look at these paintings and he'd be like, and this painting tells a story. I would love to do like a little sci-fi where it's like, yeah, that's your, that's your inspiration. And then boom, you have to oh, tell a sci-fi story about of that. these things. Yeah, right? Um, that's very smart. Ooh. I mean, the problem is I have all kinds of great ideas, but nobody's giving me any money for it. All you got to do is write them down. Yeah. Write them down, man. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm speaking it into the podcast. Yeah, man. You can't take my ideas, guys. You can't. It's, it's copyrighted. No, that's that is sick. Yeah. Actually, so, hey, I feel like it's happened. Like I'm looking at this. That looks like something. Yeah. 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 You just have that. Have to have that as like kind of the central image in your 10 minute short movie. Same with this lady. 
Is she a balloon animal come to life? I think so. <laughs> She's thick. I got to I gotta touch the two. Yeah, man. I wanted to, but I was not. Okay, we're just going to flop it one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Man. I, I, will, I, I will say when I was going to school here, and I was a little, like, tense. Uh-huh. I would come and look at these, uh, these sculptures. Just naked ladies doing... Oh, and they're throughout the whole thing. Yeah, and then you can see right up her cooter. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, right? But, you know, it's art. It's okay. Barney. Hello. <laughs> you have a friend, Barney? Yes, I see her. There's a person. Thank you for pointing that out. That is what he's doing. Look. <laughs> no, I think, I think he does. I think he's like, did you see this person here? Right. Yeah. They're, they're not a threat. I, 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 I assess them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this one. Uh, Miro. Let's go see that one. Looks like a space penguin to me. I like it a lot. Yeah, serendipity. But, but also, I've been thinking for months, months, I guess, for a couple months about, like, oh, you know what would be great? Mark. Thank you, But man. then when I saw you on that, that mic, I was like, I, the universe is telling me I gotta fucking do this shit. Bro, I've been seeing so many synchronicities and like things that line up like that. I yeah. ask for something and then it comes or right? it shows itself. And I don't feel that everywhere else. I don't know if it's because I'm in California. I don't know if it's because how closer kind of the dots are to everything yeah, right now. Yeah. And when I mean dots, I mean just everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, information and about space. The singularity, right? Yes. Yes. Things are just closer. It seems like you can reach out and touch something. I got invited to a making music. And I showed this girl um, an artist that she never even heard of. A few days later, she says, he, he, I just got invited to his house. Holy shit. Things oh, are just... But that's, in a weird way, that's how it works. That's how it works. That's how the universe works. <laughs> so when your friend, the sorcerer, says, I want this thing, and then it comes into his life, it's like, number one, first off, be careful what you call into existence. Be careful what you're thinking. <laughs> and, okay, so I was listening to this podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're here and they talk about healing but healing from a spiritual level right yeah. and it says once somebody um accepts and fully understands that they're in control of their energy and what they bring into their life and and what they eat and all these other things that and they truly understand that that's what they can bring into their life that's when the healing actually has been yes. done and now they can start making changes yes well, it's so funny because <laughs> <What? laughs> i feel like Whatever was going on with me psychically, mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. the fear before getting the kidney out, once I had it out, it's like almost like it was carrying all of my oh. shittiness, my sickness, mm. my fears. And it's like now that it's out of me, I'm just like, oh, yeah, Barney, come here. Get away from there. Come here. We don't need you to get high. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, he'll just become part of the sculpture. Yeah, it'll be an art exhibit point. then. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's wonderful. Yeah, and I'm sure he was just like, because you know they love, uh, um, fuck it, what's that shit you put in your car and makes it so it doesn't overheat? Antifreeze? Yeah. Mm, the they, smell of it. The smell, and they lick it and they, get, and they die because I want to go into this. Well, it seems like that would taste sweet, you yeah, know? Yeah, right? It, it looks, seems like Andy Freeze like would be, like, yeah. Got a fucking, like, Gatorade Icy, plus, cool vibes. Yeah. yeah. Unless, I think we got to go in. Yeah, he's in te- respect the integrity of the surface. And Let's go inside. It. And then he pees <laughs> on it. You needed to catch a picture of him yeah, with right. the picture there. Yeah. I mean, I think we should host a mic in here. Man. <laughs> people would come yeah for sure and it's got a good sound it's got good uh, you know acoustics yeah yeah this is sick just is one sick. you already look cool i'll take a picture i mean this is why I, I was like I, I had to find my light <laughs> i think that's the great thing about a sculpture like this is throughout the day it's gonna change man you know yeah yeah like right now it's this but then if we came in the app oh oh It'd yeah be like this oh yeah or like that oh Mm. So they have one of these at, over at LACMA, mm-hmm. and it's, it's huge. It's like three times the size. There's two of them that are about three times the size. And because it's inside, it doesn't have the same... Light thing yeah, going on. Yeah, it doesn't have the same dynam- dynamism going on. Yeah, I think it'd be... That's fun. another thing I miss. That's the thing I miss is art. 
art. Uh, thank God there's art outside. Well, uh, I'm going to get my second uh, shot on March 9th. Mm-hmm. And then sometime in a week or so after that, I'm going to try to go to, do you know Meow Wolf? Where? Meow Wolf. No. Okay, so it, it, it started in Santa Fe first, and it's like they took over a... Um, uh, a bowling alley, and they just—it's like an installation art thing. Okay. But now they have one in Vegas called Omega Mart, and I am gonna try to go out there before the world opens up again while I have my vaccine. I'm inviting you if you want to go. No, that sounds amazing. Yeah, <laughs> if you want, if you're into it. But uh, Meow Wolf sounds meow amazing, wolf. dude. I think about you heard about this augmented reality stuff, oh, yeah. right? There's no reason augmented reality. We could you could have an. Uh, uh, a art exhibit at your house. Yeah. You just zh- 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 come up and you just get to see. I mean, could you fully really experience it? Probably not. Well, so I like the idea of what I call mixed reality, right? Okay, what's that? So I would love to do, and I'll call it like a, a haunted house for lack of a better term. Okay. So you have a heads up display and you're walking through an environment. Maybe there is real stuff in the environment. Maybe it's like a blank and the, and the, and the VR goggles create the world as you're going through it. Mm-hmm. But then... You throw in some actors, and you throw in some interactive stuff that's actually at the environment. So let's say the... Well, that's op- augmented reality. But it's both. Okay. Well, it that's makes why it they mixed. Call it, that's why Somebody might jump out at you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So let's say in the, in the heads-up display, maybe you can do a thing, like you can move your arm like that, and it kills them, and it goes... Mm. Right? So you're in this place where you're having this interactive... Right, right, right. ...with these actors in an environment. But you don't know which one is real, maybe not. Exactly. So someone may come up and touch you. Yeah, Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, see, that's why I call it a haunted house, because I feel like scary. You, you get to play around with those different levels of reality. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, again, you say, I have all these crazy ideas. I got to find a fucking producer, baby. Where's the money? Right, right. But I'll just... Really, I'll just producer speak. or just a guy that has the know-how or he has the link. And there's, there's think houses... There's think houses in all these places yeah. with all that that are like, we need ideas. We need a creative. They exist. Yeah. You need, that guy, you know, you need to meet, like, man, another thing. Yeah. Like, so, with, but again, I'm, I'm speaking in, at least into the mm-hmm. podcast at the very, very least. The people that I need to meet, I realize, are out there. They're a step away. The person that I need to meet that's going to uh, connect me to the casting director or the booker that I need mm-hmm. to meet, he's... Right out there, he's a step away. He's one dot away. You know, I've already met him probably, you know. And so all I can hope is now that I'm being my best person when I see him next or that I perform at my best or that I, you know, because all these people, these dots, like I keep saying, are just, they're like one thing away (laughs) to whatever I want. But it's just like, sometimes I stop myself. Someone invites me to something. I say, no, I don't have enough money right now. Yeah, exactly. I'm not feeling my best. I'm bloated. I, I, I will try. I will try again to to when I know <laughs> I'm going to Meow Wolf. I will try again to hit me up, man. Hey, really? It'll just be a four hour drive. Go and do the thing. Maybe stay at a hotel and then come back. That's lit. It's just like I don't want to make it. I, I don't like Vegas in general. Mm. I'm not. I don't gamble. I don't like buffets. I think it's a very sick, sick, sick town. But I want to see this art. You know. I'm I, actually doing some stand up in the, their March. 20th, maybe 19th and 20th. Should be oh. cool. Oh, well, let, hey, well if, 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 if that's what's happening, let me know and I'll plan my trip around okay. that time and I'll meet you there. That'll be lit. Yeah. Because then it'll give me a reason. It'll give me like, oh, well, this is the time I need to go. I can go see Mark's show. I can go and hit up fucking Omega Mart. I it's- haven't been to Vegas in so long. Um, yeah. It is gross. But also, if you want to sin... <laughs> If you want to sin yeah, in it America, is. it's that's cheap. What and- it is. It's it's America's Amsterdam. <laughs> but but with the nice perversion of a lot of weird Christians being there. <laughs> you know, like, the, like there's like like there's a, like grandma who went to church her whole life is spending her fucking the the last of her children's inheritance. Mm. You know, she's just like, you know, she worked so hard. Fuck those kids. I don't know. Yeah, this is this is where these are my stomping grounds. I used to come through here. I used to beg, go in that office to beg them to give me credits so I could uh, graduate faster. <laughs> and, Can somebody uh, just give you a credit? Yeah, I mean, if, you know, again, this, everything is storytelling, right? Yo, yeah, oh, man, yeah, isn't it? And this is, you know, basically the storytelling capital of LA. UCLA Film School. And what I mean is, like, they're teaching you how to tell the stories of this town. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Yeah, I uh, like, like I said, it, it was in this building was the the fucking tweakers. Mm. So I got on meth. Then I met a guy who was in the crack, and then I spent a whole summer just fucking. One group of people was all tweaking. This other guy was all crack. And then eventually you just get to the point where crack is more important than fucking anything. And it's like, oh, that's that's it. I'm done. This is I found I found it. I found the thing that is gonna make me the happiest. I've, well, it didn't make me happy, but yeah, it was. Uh, I was that was it. I think once it, once it got once I fucking discovered crack, I was done. Mm-hmm. But then, but then, but for me, it's like. The way I think about it is, you know, I started drinking and smoking pot when I was like 11. You're going to end up at either heroin or crack. That'll be your last stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so, either you get off or you... Or you die. Or you die. Yeah. And Jesus. Yeah. I mean, th- thankfully it was crack. Because I, I think heroin is is a tougher... Is a tougher uh, it's tougher on people. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't dove into addiction um, as far as the substances. Yeah, you know. Well, that's um, also probably why you have such a pure spirit. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, I have darkness. You know, say I was sure. in the military. We blew up some shit that we shouldn't have for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> we definitely did that. I mean, you can't help young men from fucking trying to blow up shit they aren't supposed they, to. Hey, you give us toys, million dollar toys. Yes, and we're horny and we can't fuck. Well, let's take it out on this city. Yes. Oh, shit. That's so insightful. That's what we're doing. And it's the youngest dudes and they're good at their jobs. And it's like, well, yeah, let's do it. And I'm fucking bored. Yeah. <laughs> That's the game. And so I, I think about that. You know, I talked to some of my friends that uh, I talked to some of my friends kind of recently about it. And, 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 you know, I, went, I, you know, got diagnosed with PTSD yeah. Um, realizing, you know, I c- catch myself not breathing or catch myself, you know, oh, yeah. c- catch yourself just going through a moment and just like, yo, what the fuck? Is this because I'm in traffic or is it because I haven't eaten or is it because it's, I'm working, you know? But no, you were... What? Yeah, no, but, that, but those are the triggers. Yes. Those are the triggers that bring out... I mean, I, I had PTSD for not going to war, oh. but <laughs> what? Is this it? He's Arr. ready to play. Arr. He's, yeah, he's, he's at that level of energy where he's like, you know, yeah, we're going to do it's a triangulation. That wore him out. Yeah, I, I, whatever. I had PTSD from living with my brother who was a... Who killed my dad? But that's again, that's a whole mm-hmm. different thing. Wrong but, car. Uh, um, the Toyota Tundra. Yeah, I just bought it. Man, this thing's nice, man. Are, they're always sick. Uh, Tundras, Tacomas, man, they're lit. Fuck yeah, I love a Toyota. But uh, so so you, you've been diagnosed. Yeah, and so what's the what's the treatment? Man. You talking to go through a whole thing, exposure type shit. Oh, you're doing the exposure therapy? Yeah. Oh my god. That's gotta be brutal, but it is I'm, I'm taking a break because of the the because of the last couple of months just because COVID started happening and they like I think they shut down the facility the dude was working at, you know? Yeah. Um, but I talked to my friends who I talked to my friends who kinda like I haven't talked to you in too long, and they start saying the exact same things yeah. that they brought. That I, you know, and of course it's like a, oh, that affected you too. It sounds simple, but really it was like a, oh it's, it's shit, huge. yeah. But that, we just don't pay attention to, or it. we don't realize yeah. because I didn't do. I wasn't. I flew drones, man. Yeah. So I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking. I'm honestly embarrassed to say that it affected me because there's dudes stop, with their legs blown stop, off. Stop. No, I was. Now I'm, I'm way yeah. more open. But at yeah. the time, I was just like, dude, you fucking saw shit through a screen. You didn't fucking actually see. But then you really start digging into the stories a little bit. And you're just like, oh, I could see. Yeah. And I could see. And then well, when you're, you have a moral conscience. Yes. And that's, I think, the thing that is really the most, like, Almost, I'm not gonna excuse the guy getting his leg blown off, but there's almost catharsis there. Yeah. There's like, oh well, I I had this moral quandary that I was dealing with, but I lost my fucking leg. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
So, and again, I think that's with, with whatever digital warfare, this is the thing that, that nobody pays attention to or gives a shit about. Right. Is that, oh, you're just playing a video game. Come on, bro. No, but it desensitizes you. It makes it easier. So you, you know, Ooh. so you have a, 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 a distance. Yeah, a distance oh, from it. Oh, man. Right? So you think at the time, you're just bored for a couple of days because you guys haven't killed anything. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to No, that's there, how still, we really were. So dark. Right? You're bored, and then you finally do something, and everybody cheers, and you're like, whoa, oh, I'm getting rewarded for this evil. I mean, you know, it yes, really is. Yes. Yeah. So it was a thing. You're like, we cheered, and, and um, you know, it's just, it's wild, and uh, it'll make you, it'll throw you for a loop once you get out. And I was, man, I got out, and I was married at first. And I remember her being like, Maybe there's something going on or something. And I just played the role. Around. There's nothing going on with me. I'm fine. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> right? I did that. That was me. <laughs> Maybe wow. you should go. That's not. All this stuff isn't that normal. She's trying to say it nicely. And I she, and I did the exact thing that they do in the movies. I mean. <laughs> I didn't cry in the shower. But. <laughs> <laughs> One step short of that. <laughs> but no, but. But really, the reason it's portrayed so well in the movies, especially if there's a good actor doing it, is because this is yeah. a universal feeling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is out there. People are these poor, and I'm going to say boys, young men, yeah. are just their their emotions, their spirit is just brutalized. Mm-hmm. And then no wonder they turn into men that are just like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Exactly. Yeah. Woo, man. Well, thank you, thank you for sharing that. I want to ask you this. Um, so I think that there's definitely a relation that you're having between not feeling that you're deserving of the magic of the universe and right. your PTSD. Mm, yeah, you know? it's connected, yeah. Yeah, they are. They're you guilt, heavily guilt and shame yeah. and all that shit of just like, I don't deserve that. Look at what I've done. I'm a piece of shit. You know, you tell yeah. yourself these stories, whereas a blessing is sitting right there waiting to, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I can't do that. This person doesn't really love me or whatever. Man, all that stuff. I don't all deserve that. this pretty girl. I don't deserve this job. I don't deserve this opportunity. I don't deserve this stage time. I don't deserve this good meal. I don't deserve this, right? Yeah. And then you you end up like, why didn't I go do that? Why didn't I go on that trip? Why didn't I live my life, yeah. man? Um, especially when you're a blessed person and people want to be around you yes. or the universe wants to reward you constantly because yes. you really are not a bad person. You're not a bad person. And I also think the other the other part of that is we're all, we're all living in this kind of blessed environment, for yeah, sure. Yeah, uh-huh. The, the fucking gar- Garden of Eden, right. as it were. I would say. Um, and I think that the mechanism to deny ourselves, that's the, that's the darkest thing in our culture because, you know, you were doing your duty. You thought you were like signing up for one thing, but it ended up being another thing. It's like that's to me. It's all the gaslighting of our culture, mm. you know. Mm. And and that, that's what it always is: a bait and switch. Bait and switch. It's always Everything. a bait and switch, and then there's just levels of bait and switch within it, you know. <laughs> yes, I love that. That's so true. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and then you're standing at the kingdom of heaven, and he's like, "No, I'm the devil." Exactly. Oh, no. Hell, psych. <laughs> like, does it stop? <laughs> I, I I think though it, I don't know if it ever will like let's say spiritually or psychically psychically stop, but I think that you there's the possibility of being in the moment and enjoying. Well, it. we're talking about yeah, presence. Yeah, presence is the true fulfillment. Yeah, right here, taking a breath, feeling exactly where you are. Yeah, like exactly. Uh, what's going on? <sighs> Right here. Right here. It's pleasant. Yeah, this I is got a, sunny. A jack exactly. <laughs> Just kidding. But, no, but it is. It's, it's life. We're if you're alive. in jail. If you're in jail, jackhammer being outside and free sounds like heaven. Yeah, (laughs) this is why I remember that sound exactly. Or your solitary confinement, or your death. So this is where it happened. This is the this is where the portal opened up, and I became a new man. UCLA Medical Center. Wow. Which happened to be, I was like, oh, of course, the universe has called me back to UCLA to get my surgery. Uh, Because this is like the bear. This is where it all starts. Always. Yes. Yes, this is where I, I, I thought I was going to become an artist and wow. I failed to become an artist or whatever. I put myself, th- and then like it had to remind me, God called me back to here to be like, oh, I'm going to rip out your kidney if you don't fucking get out there and make your thing. Wow. Yeah. Another reset. Then close reset. to God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I, I, there, there's, uh, the way I describe it is I say I, I experienced, uh, uh, three, um, Wait, what is the term I use? I Oh, I had three kinds of faith. The first faith is like 
doctors at UCLA, the best right, school, right. Mm-hmm. faith in science, right. faith in yes. education, faith in the system doing what it's supposed to do. Yes, yes. Then I had good old baby Jesus. Mm-hmm. Can you help me through this baby Jesus? Mm-hmm. I got help you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I had just regular old baby Jesus. Then I had what I'm calling sci-fi faith, mm. which is I went through a portal and there are a lot of different doorways I could have gone through. One of them could have been death. One of them could have been, you know, disfigured, stroke face, you oh, know. Oh, gosh, yeah. The, but the one I decided to go through, and I, and I said this to myself before the surgery, is I'm going to come out of this the best possible version that I can. Mm. And I set that intention, and ta-da, here right. I am. I mean, you know, at this point, I'm a, I'm a year out of the surgery, and I'm feeling... Um, I'm feeling back. I'm feeling that, you know, I'm going to, like, you know, like Al's become my kind of, Albamani's he's kind of become my, my, my corner guy, my ring guy. Mm-hmm. And he's really helping me see that I, there's a, a career for me in this oh. dumb industry. Oh, is there a puppy dog over there? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Oh, there's one. There's one right there. there. He smells it. You okay, big dog? <laughs> yeah, he's just like tired. I'm going to go... Yeah, so, yeah, that, so, this is, uh, Mark, how mm. did you do this? Do what? Goddamn what do you mean? sorcerer. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know, help me see all these things. Oh, man. Yeah, right? <laughs> You're grounded, so we were able to just re- meet at a level. That's what it was, and talk. Uh, oh, thank you. That's it, bro. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy, like, when you can see somebody else out there in in the madness and be like oh this guy's okay yeah that is yeah 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 this guy's not gonna fuck me up he's not gonna say some some shitty thing that i'm gonna be li- li- <laughs> replaying in my head and later <laughs> yeah people will whisper evilness in your head to break you down later they don't even so, so you wound you wounded walk away <laughs> yeah all right bye and it starts doing his magic in your brain <laughs> it's true oh man and there's so much i mean of course it's we're in a industry of insecurity and drama. Woof. And so as long as you can figure out not to bring that into your own personal bubble, I, th- I think you can survive and thrive. And, I think yeah. it's like knowing your insecurities, accepting them and being, and being honest with yourself about them yeah. and, and bringing them close rather than trying to run away from them Woof. is the best thing. Because the more you run away... <laughs> The bigger they become, and the more monsters they become, and then, and then someone else can t- can weaponize them against you. Yeah, that's some shit. That is some shit. That's the, the and, and uh, you know what I'm saying. I'm not all the way in, in the most powerful place on all of whatever my demons or insecurities or flaws are. Uh, I mean, but but again, like I but I think as a performer, this is the the superpower that I've seen is accepting that vulnerability. That this is who I am. Yes. Take it or fucking leave it. Don't try to change it. And some you know? of y'all are fucked up too, and you know it. But I'll say it. I'll be the one. I'll I'm, take yeah. it. I'll no, be the one does. to say it out loud <laughs> yeah. in my relationship with it because that's not what you guys. That's not. That's my job. Yeah. <laughs> that's my job is to tangle with this. You guys go back to work tomorrow and fucking push all the shit along. Yeah. Well, it, it, exactly. That's our job. I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to say how my mother stuck exactly. a thermometer in my butt it's yes. much too old exactly for her to be come that. on and I, I, anybody else here that can and can relate with that just nod know, your head <laughs> yeah or know that it's okay yes. no that yes. you didn't do anything mm. wrong you're not you're not the uh the the the, the villain in this story you know cuz that's I, th- I think that's the other thing it's like with the PTSD you probably at times feel like the villain of the story yes oh well fuck that the fucking the villain of the story is the United States government mm. <laughs> and Raytheon. And, like, who who built your drones? Um, fucking uh, Lockheed or Martin or yeah, of or course. Boeing maybe yeah. too. A little some both. Yeah, maybe it was Raytheon, but some one of those motherfuckers. Yeah, but still, but they're like, we need you guys to spend a lot of money on our toys. The only way you can use them though is by killing people. Mm. Come on. Mm. What are their toys? Yeah. No, it's... Uh, but, hey, you know, without uh, General Electric, I wouldn't have gotten my kidney image properly. Right? Okay. <laughs> it's the same as like, Iron Man. Without that super... T- and then we use... Man, I think... Oh, let's go one... Well, I don't even know if we're still talking on this podcast. Yeah, we but, are. Um, <laughs> dude, like, uh, they talk about... They were talking about... Um, Jesus, done. There's some theory. Then 
Dunzig theory, something like that. But uh, the Dunning Kruger effect? D- mm, no, no, but. I know what that is, but no, the effect of why, if there's aliens out there, then why haven't they we oh, seen us, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, there's these filters that each society may go through, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, like okay, first one is maybe nuclear, or, or maybe it's uh, oh, health. These technologically, levels. yes, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. So war, then um, you know, what I'm saying um, industrial revolution or some shit, and then like uh, you know, sicknesses, and then like nuclear, like all these levels that you have to bust through, and like um, maybe civilizations. They can't fail. get through that. Yes. They fail, and there's no civilization that hasn't made it through there, and that's why we haven't seen any yet, right? Yeah. And then, like, um, and maybe we're close. We've broken through so, so many, but maybe we're close to one. Then, at the end of it, it was like, well, if there was one out there, wouldn't we have met it or seen at least proof of it, you know, somewhere? And then it was like, well, maybe, maybe what we think is advanced society, we're too immature because we think that it would be some big... We still want to build idols and big machines and skyscrapers and huge technology, and we still think that we should be able to see wars, but maybe they are mature beyond wars. Uh, so there's that, number one. Also, number two, and this is the one I uh, heard, any alien civilization that has the technology to get here mm-hmm. can fucking do whatever the fuck they want to us. Yes. They can fool us. They can murder yes. us. They can harvest us. So the fact that they were, they've discovered interstellar travel to make it to here. Right. We're never going to, we can never We can't keep, fathom. Yeah. We can't even we, fathom what their reasoning would be because it could be outside of communication yeah, with us or yeah. even control. Yeah. What, you know, and, and maybe their technology is inward. Meditation yeah. is a technology. So maybe they're building their shit inside of another realm. Yes. (laughs) So we just think, why why is there no space skyscrapers yet? They haven't built anything to shape their penises yet? Well, and I think the other part of that is, let's say, let's, you know, play this game. Let's assume that they are already here. Mm -hmm. And maybe fucking some of these yogis are in connection with them. And maybe okay. they're having a almost like a spiritual debate or like is, is humanity worthy of this? Uh, okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, maybe, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm speculating on that That if you can open up these, you know, kind of inner dimensions maybe there is a dialogue that's going on that's kind of maybe keeping us safe, you know. They're, 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 at least there's a few of these peaceful people that have learned meditation that are out there representing us uh-huh. you know they're like yeah. oh don't kill us yet right you know mm-hmm. maybe I don't know That's I, this is such an interesting idea and when we look at technology and how the, those same technologies that we find and we end up using to kill or using to fuck could be used to heal yeah right yeah. Um, that's the same with everything yeah. you know any power you have no, there's I, two spectrums on what you how you, you can, can use, use a it. knife to kill somebody or yes. you can use it to, to feed cut them. some food and feed yes. some people yeah that's, and, I, and I think that, you know, even the the uh, Motorola cell phone, right, which was basically the first cell phone, came from a military use. And now it's like now you can you know, go into your pocket and try to fucking order a pussy. Make a movie. You make know, yeah, buy a pussy. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, exactly. Yes. This makes you a king. I think you told me that. Yes. Dude, I've used that so it's many like times. This phone makes you a king, dude. And I've said that so many times since then. Like, I have my cell phone. I'm on a throne of anything that I, I want. I don't know if I use that term, but uh, but I definitely I remember being at the mic being like, it's a remote control for the universe. Yes, you it can really open is. whatever you want. With it. But I like the idea that it makes you. I mean, Yes, like literally, <laughs> you could be shitting, you could be sitting and on your ho- throne yes. and fucking be like, and I would like another food in my belly. Pizza and pussy, please, at <laughs> yeah. my door and in the next hour. <laughs> ah, my, 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 my stomach is momentarily empty while I'm shitting. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a remote control for the universe. Uh, yeah, I, and I believe it. I, and also, like, I think one of the reasons why we're having so many problems is we get people like Trump. Like, he figured out how to exploit the technology, for sure, but at least Twitter, to, to his own evil means. Uh, I think we just, it's like, it's like, it's such a quantum shift in the level of technology that is in the common person's hand that people just don't know what to do with themselves. And I think that's why there's so many weird problems out in the universe right now. It's like people are getting things that... They're, they're asking for stuff and not knowing that they're get, asking for it. You know what I mean? I think mean? that ju- people are what they are. And so you give them this much technology and you really get to see what world they'll create. Yeah. 
So we and yeah. what president they'll elect, yeah. you know, like people were maybe disgusted and grossed out. But I was always like, no, that's that's a good representation of, of, America. The, of the America right yeah. now, actually. And so yeah. let's sit with that. Yeah. Um, and live in reality when people say shoulds and like how somebody should act or what things should be and how somebody should be but I'm like no this is how they are right now and let's figure out that and why that's like oh, that that's good. and then move from there yeah. you know not like how it thinks this because if you keep moving and should you, 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 the, the universe doesn't move that way that's a good point yeah I, I, you know he was like I feel like he was like we called all of all of America into being with with him. Yes. Yeah. You know the vanity and the the short sightedness. Yes. And the all of these things, but also like instant, instant like gratification in all of the ways of just saying something and it changing, and you just calling this and the snap of the finger and just like it, man. But also, I will say this: motherfucking entertaining. Entertaining. And that is America is a entertaining mess like watching yes. a fucking a crazy fucking cracked out fucking <laughs> Whitney Houston and yeah, Bobby exactly that's what we are <laughs> oh now we have Biden in office which is really poetic cause he's like he's literally he's not gonna do a thing which that he the, said yeah, he's not gonna do anything, anything. That he, no no he's, he is, he is, he's too old and he doesn't give a shit and he's just like he's just gonna you know just that's the other thing that America does is just then it it creates a problem and then ignores it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, congratulations, America, you did it. You are yourself. <laughs> hey, but I think though for us artists, it doesn't matter. Just what it's the thing that we see and then we reflect on it and we say, "Isn't this ridiculous?" and figure out how to make money at that. That's it. Yep. Figure out how to yeah that's a, this a, that's such a great perspective because I'm gonna try to not to be in such angst anymore because I think that that's really what's been fucking me up is being like why isn't it <laughs> right exactly and so many people like that I mean people probably gave themselves ulcers flexing and just being angry at this what this what this person is doing and what they're saying and all that stuff and I'm not saying it doesn't matter at all but I'm saying like you need to. How, you need to find out how you're gonna deal with that. Yeah. Find out how you're, and not like let if you, anything in life if it's gonna make your heart, you know, build up or make you fucking your blood pressure rise yeah. and all that shit, man. You gotta tangle with that because that's gonna kill you, man. Yeah. Not, and it, and I think it's like you know there are so many like let's say whatever ways in our culture that it's like ah ha, ha, we're gonna keep pushing oh, the buttons. Man. Ah! Yeah, poke the bear, poke the bear. Yeah. It just keeps us all like. Nah, 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 yes, nah, yes, nah. yes. I need a smoothie. Yes. <laughs> it's the only thing that's gonna make me feel good. Yes, and then there's always how many smoothie shops will pop up and be like, here, seven dollars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, They'll, you want to feel better? <laughs> instantly at your door. Uber Eats. Yeah, suck on this. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's done. Get another. Oh yeah, I said it's that's like that's a that's an amazing person because I think like. I can be mostly in that, meaning like I just have my head shoved up my ass, and I'm like, I'm gonna do my own right. thing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But uh, but when I actually do go on Twitter or something like that, I'm just like, oh, oh. yes, I, I just stop. And then you create your own triggers on there. Sometimes I somehow I, I if I was making an echo chamber, why is it so triggering still? Oh, because <laughs> those people that are that agree with me <laughs> repost. Those people that agree with me repost the things that trigger them, and so now I agree with them. But they're give, they're explaining, you know. Yeah, they, they're man. even more. They're going, they're going yes. deeper down that. Thing. Yes. Oh, I didn't know I should be bad at that part of it too. Fuck. Have you have you uh, got locked in? Have you gotten any of these like you know tunnels down YouTube at all? Not really. I I, I had a really bad when YouTube first came on the market. Uh, I was like very interested in it and then I kind of saw the cracks and then I was like eh I only, I just I literally only go for what I specifically want and then I leave right okay yeah just because of that because I could feel the fucking casino in my brain fucking wanting me to gamble on the next video yes yeah and do they have I mean it's probably always been like this but I'm more recently completely seeing how dangerous it is of like uh, these wormholes you can go down and then they, they they eventually take you to this place, this this either ideology or just like 
conclusion mm -hmm. and then you end up in a group of all those people uh, of your newfound faith oh yeah that's like they're hurting you <laughs> they're hurting people oh shit they take, I never even thought of it that yeah, way yeah dude if you're a man and you have trouble dating they take you down a, a red pill road which eventually turns you conservative which eventually puts you on parlor or some shit you know if you're a woman if you're a a uh, 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 a person that wants to, you know, find out nutrition shit or like remedies, natural remedies, then they take you down. What's wrong with the medicine industry? You know what I'm saying? Then, 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 and then that shit goes to Nazis almost. Yeah, always. You yeah. know? So it's just like, yo, these wormholes and these belief systems, the rhetoric just ropes you in and just like, here's another video. And then your algorithm is like totally giving just you going, more and more and more, and more of that. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I've also, like, purposely, there's, a, especially on Facebook, but a little bit on YouTube, and I don't, like, have a regular account that I log in on mm -hmm. YouTube, uh, I had purposely, like, at least eight or nine years ago, started scrambling my algorithm on Facebook mm -hmm. on purpose. Now they've, the problem is Instagram has finally figured me out, and I'll tell you what that's all about <laughs> in a minute, uh, is, uh, you know, I would just, like... They would offer me, like, uh, Kazakhstan music. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, yes, yes, yes. Right, I right. just liked everything, so it couldn't tell who mm -hmm, I was. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I did that on purpose, because then I'd occasionally get some crazy-ass ads, and I'd be like, this is who Facebook thinks I am. Right. Instagram has figured it out, and now they think I'm a hat guy. They, it's all just fucking fancy hat Instagrams from all over the world. You know what I mean? Like, fucking <laughs> but it's not like, now it's like how long you stay on a, this, yeah. On a post. yeah. How, how many seconds you stay, you stay staring? There. Yeah. No, they got they, they figured it out. And it, it, to what end? Eh, just to make fucking Zuck rich. It's like it's like they're controlling the world only because some fucking nerd uh, wants to stay in power. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like mm. it's, it's it, again like it it's goes nowhere. It doesn't pay anybody. Somebody was asking about oh well what's a, what about parlor? And I was like oh a, a, another fucking uh, what did, how did I phrase it? But basically, like, another video game I'll never get my fucking time back for. Mm. You know? Mm. Another place I'm going to put points into and it's never going to give me any points back. And that's what, you know, but but I tell you, if performers, those of us that, I mean, yeah, some of the front-facing comedian types and stuff like that, they can make money. But I think really the people that are going to be able to be more in charge of their own destiny are people that can actually get in front of a crowd and can sing or dance or make people laugh because then you get you're 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 you have such a pure unmediated uh interaction with you and the audience mm. and i think that to me when i look at like where the most power is is in that it really is because you can you can sustain yourself and you can s sustain an audience and yeah, and then you can do like little digital tricks for them to yeah. fucking collect shit and look at and whatever. But ultimately, that 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 kind of that one to one is never going to be able to be replaced. That's when I talk about agape. I can't wait until that. I know the world will be in a better place when I can actually go to fucking the Saban Theater and see Doctor Beckwith in person. Mm. You know, it's like that's that'll be the indicator to me that the world has has started to heal. You know. Uh, uh, but you know but also like I love going to that I call it the show he just puts on a fucking great show and it's singing and dancing and he's got a good message and whether or not I believe overall in the, the pure divinity that he's speaking that's still part of the mystery uh, I like going there I like you know what I mean I like, feel good yeah I get what I come for yeah. and I don't have to buy in all the way no I could, I could I, but that's also like I, that's the thing I want to take to my comedy mm. is just to be able to be that person for people right you know that they can come and just fucking feel good for a little bit you know the stage is medicine that's a, that's that's the hope <laughs> uh, man this has been remarkable this has been great yeah um uh, I mean, we might as well talk about your social medias, uh, Rastafari Unicorn. Yes. Fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is my IG. Come check it out. You know what I'm saying? There's a, a lot of stuff. Oh. I play around in my story and do a lot of crazy things. I'm really experimenting on, well, I'm really exper experimenting with what I want to do with my story. Like, you know, I, uh, so stay tuned. I, be, I do a lot less posts than just like, 
really want to entertain you with the story and what, what the hell's going on in my brain or what I'm interested in at that time. Um, so that, dropping music, uh, always got the Fresh Jays going on. And what's, uh, what's, where, where do people find the Fresh Jays? Um, YouTube. Okay. Fresh Jays Podcast. Um, and the Fre- Fresh Jays on Instagram. And yeah, we're, we're going up. We're going to have some cool ass guests on there coming up. So that's always fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, there's the plugs. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> As I'm trying to make a left turn onto Olympic. Heavy and hard to do. <laughs> I, I realized I was lost a little bit. I mean, I kind of know where you're at. If you were have made another right turn, I would have said something. But you were, you were. I knew you weren't getting too far off. Yeah, no, be right. I, I, I'm doing that thing where I, I, it's like you, you tr- like a s- s- spiraling yes, in. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Because that's also this this weird. It's weird. Like the border between Beverly Hills and Los Angeles. It's there. It's real. But it's also like, I feel like Beverly Hills is always like, Ooh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, in every way. Yeah. So, mm. In laws that they draw. In yeah. laws that they, they bring up. For sure. Yeah. Dude, they, they, you know how long they fought for the, for the purple line oh, to not yeah, be extended? That's right. Oh, my God. When I, when I hear about that, I'm just like, oh, this is exactly how oppression works. We, even though the people that are working for us are, could really benefit. benefit. Yes. We're going to fucking fight it goddamn tooth and nail because we don't want whatever other undesirables it, it possibly. Disgusting traffic on the 10 that did, for people to get over here all the time. Yeah. The buses. If you miss a bus, you're really you're shit. Uh, yes. Or you have to. If you live in East L.A., bro, and driving, getting a lift from all over here. Or your dude that gets off maybe at 10 o'clock at night and yep. you have to stand out here where there's no, you can't even park on the street. You can't do, man. Nothing. Yeah, it's brutal. Fucking, and, you know, I would say, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of their own protected enclave, but really their streets are even shittier than Los Angeles. They got more cracks in their fucking street than I've seen anywhere else in fucking LA. Mm. You know, their fucking roads are not great. I mean, look, you know, look at the nice, clean asphalt here. We're, well, I guess we are in Beverly Hills, but we're, we're, we're popping. We're in the borderline between L.A. And, and Beverly Hills, and I feel like L.A. has probably been like, come on, Beverly Hills, fucking do something about your streets. Yeah. yeah I used to ride my bike from whatever, my house to UCLA, and I would, you know, you'd go through Beverly Hills, and I was, it's always like, you know, that, that, that fucking black glue that they put on the cracks. Mm-hmm. It's all that. And I'm like, just come on. This is this, this chintzy. Come on. Spend some money, Beverly Hills. I know this is one of the only places in the city where in the morning they have the spray off. They spray down their oh, sidewalks. The sidewalks. Yeah. I mean, I don't know wherever else that they is. They do it in Santa Monica, okay, too. Okay, I'm yeah. sure. Of course. Yeah. Santa Monica's its own world. Yeah. Too. Well, that's how they pay for that. Yep. Yeah. Because it's making this tiny place, so let's pull our money together here. Hey, that's ownership, though, of communities, man. I, yeah, yeah. I, I do. There's a part of that that I do appreciate. Little, little, like little uh, Thai or no, little Philippines, which was just another part of East LA, which is just Beverly, Beverly and like Alvarado area, but that's actually little Philippine, I think. Little Filipino. Oh yeah, yeah, little uh, Philippine town, uh, Filipino town. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They they take great ownership of their you yeah. know area and like yeah it's still dingy and there's some homeless there but I'll say that like as far as like specifically what they deal with and and like the way they run it mm-hmm. man they have they have control over there they're very connected with their councilmen and all that type of stuff and I respect that yeah yeah I feel like uh, I they, I've been feeling a little bit more of that happening in, in the shadow of Trump. Which I think is good. Mm. Like people's political involvement. Yeah, has definitely. He's he's definitely engaged people politically. Man, which is like good. Man, that know? makes me want to look up what's going on right now. What's about to pass? So yeah. that makes me want to do man. Yeah, I, right? and yeah, I said I was going to dedicate myself way more to that. Find I found out who my people were. My city councilman people are. I know what they look like. You know. Yeah. You could turn so left here. And so if you see them on the street, I can I can check them. <laughs> <laughs> but also when meetings are, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you know, I always think like, oh, I would love to be a politician because I think I've got the, you know, any entertainer entertainer can get up and spout some shit. But then I'm like, I don't want to fucking do the work and I don't want to fucking eat all the dick that they have to eat. Yeah, you know, that's true. I, you know, not, not everybody could be an AOC. 
You know? No. She still has to take some hits, but not as many as fucking Ted Cruz. Man. Man, when you're a fucking schmuck like that. Boy. I wonder what... Has he, I don't, is he even back from Cancun yet? Oh, yes, he is. Okay, and, oh, great, and great. are the Texans going to eat him alive, you know? Like, or, or are they still going to be like, well, it's all right? So he's thrown himself into doing, like, some fucking AOC stuff. Like, he's, like, showing up at, like, whatever, food banks and stuff. So he's, he's at least... He's at least putting in the. Right <laughs> he's at least putting in the, uh, uh, the time that he should have, you know, when he was on the plane to Cancun. Right. But, you know, he's he's you know there's he's one of those these ten people, Mitch McConnell, him, whatever, that, that are just like literally going to do anything they can to destroy America. Mm. Like they don't care. They're so selfish. They've got. They're just so interested in their, whatever their money interests that they're just going to. Ah, yeah. Do whatever they have to do to stay, yeah. make face, whatever. Like the reason we had Mike Pence as a fucking vice president. Nobody else wanted that job, but that fucking no personality motherfucker. Right. <laughs> ah, it's a beautiful neighborhood. And now yeah. the now there's parking, so now I can't just hang out in front of your house anymore. <laughs> Mark, this was delightful. This was great, man. Fuck yeah. This was. I knew wonderful. it would be. I knew it would be. <laughs> I was like, I see that guy. <laughs> I see no, that dude, I'm, thank you so much for bringing me on here. Oh yeah, man. fuck yeah! This was, this was amazing. It's gonna probably take a couple weeks to get it up, just because I'm waiting on art from my friend. But mm-hmm. yeah, the Luck Club. I'll I'll tag you. I'll probably get a headshot from you beforehand, okay, so I can cool. promote all the shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's this was uh, fun, man. Let's cut, cut this shit. Yeah, I feel like I, that's the the key to it for me is like not putting any work into it. No, meaning like just hanging out with somebody and going on a hike is enough. Don't this edit it. Really Don't, one yeah. of the best podcasts I've, I've been on, to be honest. How are you? Fuck yeah. The Luck Club, hiking and Barney. You making your own with your luck and time.